Greetings one and all to my Let's Play of Dynasty Warriors 4 Hyper. Um, for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Atreus Knight, and this is going to be my very first Let's Play. This game happens to be one of my favorites. It is the first of the Dynasty Warriors series that I have ever played, and with that said, um, this is where I learned about this series in general. For those of you not in the know, Dynasty Warriors is set in ancient China from around the late 100s to the mid 200s. Um, it takes place during the Three Kingdoms era. And, well, I don't want to spoil too much of the story for you, but it's very interesting. It's a very cool time period. And uh, these games, the Dynasty Warriors series, number at seven, though it's actually six, but, you know, Americans, we need uh, more games, I guess. So uh, we number it at seven. And, um, well, without further ado, I suppose we can get started. Right, now you get to select which kingdom you want, and as you progress through the game, you unlock more kingdoms to play as. Uh, the very first three kingdoms that you're able to play as are the actual three kingdoms, which is Wei, Wu, and Shu. Wei led by Cao Cao, or as he's called in this game, Cao Cao. Um, yeah, <laughs> Wu, which is led by Sun Jian, um, though that's not really true with real history, but I guess they wanted to give Sun Jian some screen time. He actually dies pretty early into the story, uh, historically, so they gave him control of this kingdom this time in this game, which is pretty cool. And then there's Shu, which is led by Liu Bei. Shu is generally accepted as the good guys of the game, um, with, Li with Liu Bei you know, being the penultimate good guy king dude. Um, I don't buy it personally because you know my favorite kingdom is Wei and Wei is going to be the kingdom that we play as. Now Cao Cao is generally treated as the villain of the series uh, for good reason. He's a dick. I'm not gonna lie. Um, but I like him because you know he's got that little beard and he's got that hat and uh, looks pretty swaggy so uh, yeah. Um, I thought about playing as Cao Cao himself He's actually a pretty good character. He has a good moveset. Um, Shahu Yuan in this game is a bit limited. Um, his moveset isn't as good. Uh, this is one of the games that suffers from the lock-on ability, which it automatically locks onto a target once you start attacking, and I really hate that. So a lot of the times when you're trying to attack an officer, you'll actually attack a soldier off to the side, and you'll lock onto that soldier, and you won't be able to get out of the combo. Um, it's really annoying. Uh, but, you know, I learned to play through it, and it's not too much of a problem. Though I am used to the no lock-on, which has been in the game since uh, Dynasty Warriors 4 Extreme Legends. Uh, but enough talking, let's uh, select Cao Cao here and uh, look into his story. A Hero of Chaos. opportunity for you, cousin. Indeed, chaos can be a powerful ally. First, I shall quell this rebellion, so my name shall be Fear. Army, forward! The Han Dynasty Long the center of power, suffers from internal strife and corruption. In response to the suppression, numerous uprisings begin to surface across the land. Led by their leader, Zhang Zhao, the followers of the religious sect known as the Way of Peace rise up in protest to the corruption besieging the land. This revolt came to be known as the Yellow Turban Rebellion, due to the yellow scars worn around the heads of Zhang's followers. 
In response to this dire situation, the Imperial Court sends out a call to arms across the land, raising an army under the command of General Heijin to combat the Yellow Turban threat. Amongst these brave warriors gathered from across the land, the face of the talented and ambitious Cao Cao can be seen. Okay, and from here, you get to pick one of three stages. Uh, for those who want to just skip ahead to the next chapter, they can go on and just choose the main battle here, which is a Yellow Turban Rebellion. But we're going to go through this entire game in its entirety. So we're going to select every single battle that we can. And we're going to start with the Yellow Turban Menace, which is the easiest stage in the entire game. Um, I'll try not to get slaughtered. <laughs> All right, um, this is the map screen. From here you get to select your equipment, look at your objectives, uh, look at the unit info, and you can change your character if you so wish. Uh, since this is a single kingdom's story mode, or muso mode as it says in the very beginning of the game, um, you don't need to stick with one character because you're playing as that kingdom the entire way through. Uh, but right now we're going to stick with Cao Cao. As for equipment, as you can see, I'm starting this game fresh. I have no equipment. I have the default bodyguards. I'm going to put them with the bow here. And um, my weapon is level 1 with zero experience. Yes, uh, what changed for, uh, of this game from Dynasty Warriors 3 was that instead of finding weapons all over the place, you actually level your weapon up. A lot of people didn't like this change. I like this system. I like this system a lot better than finding weapons. Um, you know, some people say that it gives more replay value to a game where you can find weapons that are constantly better. But the thing about that is, in Dynasty Warriors 3, you could get their special weapons, which is like their final strongest weapon. After you found that weapon, searching for weapons was kind of pointless. Um, so, yeah, I don't know why people make such a big deal out about, about it, but um, I don't. Um, objectives. Defeat Zhang Liang. And defeat is this Huang Fu Song is defeated. Um, I apologize in advance if I'm butchering these Chinese names. I like to think I know how to pronounce them, but I probably don't. So, uh, yeah. Um, let's get started. There's really nothing else to look at. Well, you only got unit info here. There's Huang Fu Song. I know it said that the commander is Heijin, but before we actually get to the rebellion part of the game, um, it goes to the lesser commanders, which is that guy. Um, then there's uh, Cao Cao. My bad. Uh, under my command is Shaho Yuan and Shaho Duin, or Shaho Dun, however, however you want to pronounce it. Uh, there's Sun Jian with Huang Gai and Sun Shang Zhang, which is his daughter. And then Liu Bei, of course, has Guan Yu and Zhang Fei, his sworn brothers. And on the enemy team is this guy, Zhang Long and Zhang Liang, I'm sorry. Uh, Zhang Man Cheng, Guan Hai, Gao Sheng, Deng Mao, Huang Xiao, Liu Pi. These guys, you never see them past the. Uh, initial stages and they're all generic as you can see so they don't really matter they're all gonna die and that's all there is to it now it may look all shiny and nice now but this game actually uses reuses the maps and it does that a lot this is not the first time you're gonna see this map last time rather. You're going to see it again when we face Lu Bu, eventually. And if you don't know who Lu Bu is, good. I don't want to spoil anything. As you can see, that lock-on feature is not allowing me to actually turn mid-attack, so it's very annoying. Because it, allow it just opens up my back and my side and everything, and it's free to dive in, pretty much. Also, when you start off like this, you, you do start off weak. And I am very weak right now. I'm the weakest I can possibly be. <laughs> so uh, let's head over to this dude over here. Here's Dang Mao. As you can see, he has a different model from the other ones. His armor's a bit more shiny. He doesn't look like some kind of street peddler. And as you can see, the more combos I do, the more weapon experience I get. And then that happens. And the combo, graciously, once you stun somebody, the combo chain is kept. So even if I get hit like that, I still keep the combo. It's pretty cool. Now you'll see that some of these guys are mounting horses. I can't actually mount a horse yet, I don't think. Uh, I think if I knock him off, he just... The horse dies or disappears or something. Oh, hey, what do you know? I can't... Ah. Oh. Oh. I tried to mount it! You have to give me credit for trying. Right, there we go. A horse it actually isn't that powerful. In Dynasty Warriors 2, the horse is very OP. 
And uh, it was cool to just trample everything in existence. Any horse. But in these games, uh, the horses aren't really that strong. But, you know, they are fast. And they're indispensable when you're trying to get from point A to point B. And I am just getting tortured around here. I'm sorry, Tao Tao. I might refer to him as Cow Cow just because I'm used to referring to him as Cow Cow. So forgive me if I do. It's, it's totally a slip of the tongue. And that is the Muso attack right there, baby. As you can see, it blows everything away if you aim it correctly. And I didn't. And all these guys are just ganging up on me right now. You can see my health is now in the red because I am getting destroyed. And this is a true Masu. As you can see, oh, there's a little pot there. He goes berserk when he's near death. Alright, now he does say Zhang Liang is left, but that's just because he's a pro. And he thinks he can attack by himself. But we're not going to attack Zhang Liang just yet. We're going to go and help everybody else out. Alright, that's what I'm Okay, we're going to go south here to the volunteer forces. Liu Bei isn't important enough at this point in time to warrant his own force. So he's part of the volunteers. Um, yeah, I don't know if he actually had hex marked yet at this point in time. That's his horse. But, uh, yeah. 